Coronavirus has hit one of Kenya's poorest slums, but heavy-handed policing has already led to tragedy. Madare, Kenya. Half a million people live here, within three square miles. My name is Elijah Kanye. This is my neighborhood. For over a decade, I've been reporting on the issues in my community. Poverty and sanitation, overpopulation and police brutality. With the COVID, you're supposed to keep a, a distance of one meter. And as, as you can see, even my hand can stretch. So far, Kenya has avoided the worst of the pandemic. By the 25th of March, only 28 cases have been reported. With just one death related to coronavirus, none of them were found in Madari. But dark clouds are beginning to gather. There will be a daily curfew from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. with all movement by persons not authorized to do so being prohibited. The first night of the government curfew is approaching. Madari residents no, it's the police who will be enforcing it. And they have a history of violence and brutality. <laughs> Kenyan's independent police oversight body recorded over 3,000 incidents of abuse by the police in 2019 alone. In the Huruma ward of Madare, I see for myself how police are enforcing the curfew. The very next morning after the curfew is enforced, my community wakes to news of a tragedy. A family right here in Nairobi is in mourning following the fatal shooting of a 13-year-old boy, allegedly by a police officer. Coronavirus has yet to reach Madari, but has already claimed its first victim. Mama, <laughs> A delegation of senior police and local officials have been dispatched to the family home. Katuambia haki itapatikana na haki itatendeka na kijana wangu ameniwacha na mpenda. Hata wengi wacha sisi wale tulilia wazazi hata wadogo wake wengi wako hapa rafiki hazini. Walilia. Kwa hivyo siwezi ongea zaidi. Kopo. But even as Yasin's parents grieve, more allegations of police brutality are beginning to emerge. A dead body has been found on the streets of Madari. It's claimed that he had been beaten by police during the previous night's curfew. As I reach the scene, I am approached by a man who claims to have witnessed the entire incident. Alikuwa mbele yangu na polisi wanamkimbiza. Wakampiga ya kwanza hakuanguka. Ya pili ndo wakamfuata wakimtega. Akuja akampigia hapa hivi kama imenua mkono juu. Yetu. Kama kama wanatuona, watu wao wanafanya. Si ati kutuletea kwa polisi. Kusema ati watumue. Huu si corona. Kwani ama yeye ni corona yameuliwa. Na nikupigwa lipigwa na karai. Suddenly the police arrive. They try to gather witness statements but the crowd are angry. The mood turns ugly, and the police are chased away. To show that the man did not die of corona, the crowd decide to take the body to the police station themselves. We put these claims to the Kenyan police service, but they refuse to respond. Yeah. 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 
As the demonstrators approach, the police respond with tear gas. I ask the commanding officer, Rafael Ga, whether the case will be investigated and if the officers responsible will face punishment. The investigation is being conducted by the DCI, an independent body, so it is going to be very, very fair. We are very, very open, very friendly. But the officers' assurances sound optimistic at best. Over 10,000 cases of police brutality have been reported to Kenya's Independent Policing Oversight Authority since 2013. Only six have led to a conviction. As tensions rise in Madare, coronavirus itself is getting closer. I join a team of health workers on an emergency call out. The patient is unresponsive and struggles to breathe. Most facilities will reject her right now because of the history of fever and the cough. Will that be a COVID suspect case? Yes. It's difficult to differentiate patients with common respiratory illnesses and uh, COVID right now. There is a lot of people in this population with tuberculosis. And if it's positive? If it's positive, me and you go to quarantine. <laughs> Two days later, Rose called to tell me the patient tested positive for coronavirus. Now my heartbeat has gone up. Rose and I had to have our own coronavirus tests and self-isolate until the results were known. Sadly, the patient did not recover. A few days later, she passed away. Coronavirus is now among us. For as long as I can remember, the people of Madare have felt abandoned by the government and abused by the police. We have learned to be resilient, but this new battle may test us to the limit. <laughs>